Okay, how many of you watching this at home have a gun for self-defense? Bedside, you know, in the bedside stand, whatever. How many of you have a light on that gun? Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. If I get anything through to you, if you have a gun at home for self-defense, you need to have a light on it. Why? Because when am I most likely going to grab something in the dark? Okay, when I can't see. It is absolutely critical that I know, properly identify the target if I've got a gun. Here's the thing, guys. Target. Is it even a target? I don't know if I can't see it. So, if you have a gun at home, you need to have a light on it. Okay, hopefully I got through to you on that one. Now, the question is, is, you know, what am I looking for in a light? Most people are going to say, I'm looking for brightness, reliability, quality, and cost. Um, yeah, brightness is huge, you know, especially if we have the ability to strobe. Both bright and strobe can actually disorient somebody and all in itself potentially prevent the need for actually using lethal force. You know, if you think about it, it's kind of hard to rush at somebody when you're blinded with light or you've got a strobe light. I mean, heck, maybe we can even put them into a seizure before we have to do anything. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways that we can test this. Not really. Um, is it bright enough? Can I see well enough to shoot accurately in the dark? Now, a lot of people, you know, they're going to they're gonna go up close to the target or they're going to shoot at an indoor range or something like that. That is why I'm standing here on my deck with a 500-yard range behind me. You know, how far can we go? Is, uh, is a gun-mounted light adequate if we can shoot at 50 yards? over there. How about 100 yards over there? What about 200 yards across the pond? What about 300? 400? Can we go 500? Let's find out. Let's check out Olight's Valkyrie Turbo and the new PL Turbo and see. <laughs> Tell me that's not awesome. We just shot the steel at 200 yards with the Prodigy at night. Nice. I'm Drew Case. Welcome to Beyond Seclusion, where I only give you my honest opinion. And it is what it is. I mean, we're either going to reach over there or we're not. Okay, guys, if you are not familiar with Olight, um, they are rapidly making a name for themselves when it comes to lights or torches. Um, they've got some pretty awesome products, I have to admit. Let's just take a quick look at the specs and tech for both of these so we know what we've got before we get started. They're very similar lights, but they're also very different. Um, and, and you'll see that on the specs and tech, but you can definitely tell that the light source is very different. The LEP versus the LED. Um, it will be interesting to see, you know, what the difference is in actual performance. Okay, real quick out of the box here. Olight always comes really well. Oops, well packaged. Instructions. So battery's gonna go in here. Got this little tab, pull that out. Close it back up. We do have the ability to adjust for the mounting. It's got the screws and the wrench. Okay, we'll do a quick out of the box for the PL Turbo. 
user manual. Okay, we open up, batteries go in there. We need to take that out. Okay, comes with the Olight batteries. Okay, so it's actually kind of stuck there because <laughs> it looks like we have three positions, but I was only getting two. It just needed a little help there. So we have the three different positions and then we can also change that out. That's awesome. I really like that feature. Now, what I really like about both of these guys is they are KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, we have a switch on off on both sides. So ambidextrous, right or left. Trigger finger turns it on. Okay. And if we want to switch to strobe, we just click them both. You can do the momentary and a quick. <laughs> I mean, that's as kiss as it gets, guys. Real quick, guys, if you're not familiar with my crazy, stupid deals, how would you like to get the best, the lowest prices on guns, ammo, and accessories? Crazy, stupid deal prices? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, there'll be a link up here. You can go to my webpage. It's an email subscription. It costs you nothing, and you can unsubscribe, cancel at any time. When I find the deals... I put them all together, and then I usually blast them out uh, once a day, every other day. I don't send them out when there's nothing really good, so it could be several days. Anyway, now I also do the same thing on X or Twitter, except I can do these in real time as they're coming in through the day. You know, the really awesome deals that I think may sell out or be out of stock, I can post on there while I'm compiling, compiling them in the email to send out later in the day. But it's awesome, guys. Um, while you're at it, check out my webpage. I think you'll find some stuff that you like. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back at night and we're going to test both of these. I got the PL Turbo on Springfield's new Echelon. Um, we're going to try this with just the iron sights, the night sights. Uh, see how well we can do it. Most of the time, and this is why I push lasers a lot, is I've got a light, but depending on how dark it is and stuff, and especially if I don't have... Uh, night sights you're not going to be able to see your sights but i think we can on this one let's find out now for the the turbo okay the original i've got this on my springfield prodigy i also got sort of an optic here that is going to allow us to potentially reach across and go some distance yeah i really can't most of the time start hitting steel at 200 yards with iron sights but i can with an optic let's come back and find out in the dark. Okay, so I got the PL Turbo mounted on my Prodigy, and this is at 50 yards. <laughs> That's gonna be really easy. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that here in a second, but absolutely no problem. How about 100 yards? Uh, not a problem there either. Um, we do have it on a pistol. We can, we'll give it a go, but I can actually easily see 200. I'm going to try to zoom in here. Okay, so that's 200. Actually, if we had this on a rifle, you can see 300 up there. Can't see 400. That's pretty awesome, guys. Uh, let's, let's do a little shooting with this. All right, this is this is gonna be easy, guys. All right, let's swing around. Okay, the camera's not showing it real well here, but we can see pretty good. Gotta wait for the smoke to clear. Yeah, that's my bad. This is at 100 yards, guys. Um, well, we got a lot of smoke. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if we can hit it with a pistol at 200 yards. I know you're gonna. <laughs> 
Tell me that's not awesome. We just shot the steel at 200 yards with the Prodigy at night. <laughs> How awesome is that? How awesome is that? <laughs> All right, we gotta we gotta wait so long in between the smoke, but there you go, guys. Now you can't see with the camera, but I can see at 100 with the strobe. Actually, let's just uh, show you with the strobe. There you go, guys. That's with the strobe. Okay, so here's the Valkyrie Turbo. That's at 50 yards. That's awesome. That's going to be easy shooting. Now, what I, I am going to try, I'm not sure. Yeah, we've got some night sights on here on this Echelon. That's sweet. Uh, we're going to find out. And then same, there's 100. Easy to see 200 uh, was doing with the PL Pro on my Prodigy, but I have a red dot on the Prodigy. We're not, uh, sorry, Prodigy, we're not going to be able to, it's late, uh, not going to be able to do this one with iron sights. I could, if I had a rifle, I can see up there at 300 yards, guys. That's awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's bang on some steel here with these night sights. Okay, so this is using the night sights. There you can see them. You can see those illuminated. All right, so let's see how well we can, we can pull this off. That's easy. That's at 50 yards. Here's 100 yards. Okay, shooting 100 yards with iron sights in daylight can be challenging. I can see it. Um, it's just holding it steady here. There you go, guys. Echelon with the night sights with the Valkyrie at 100 yards. <laughs> you decide what you think. On the Valkyrie here, on the Echelon, we just needed that strobe mode. Okay, you should be able to see the strobe. All right, go 50 yards here. There we go, guys. Is what it is. You decide what you think. So this is the PL Turbo off my bench at 50. Got a lot uh, wider beam. You know, I don't. I, I kind of like it. Um, it just depends what you're looking for. We have great field of view. Target is no problem. I mean, we could even shoot the little 22 targets at this distance. You can see them right there, clear as day. Here's the PL Turbo with the strobe, and we still have plenty of light, good field of view, but we have the strobe effect. And that's gonna be a bright strobe. It's gonna be very disorienting. Okay, so the PL Turbo with the strobe 
we can still see our target clearly at 200 yards with strobe. Now here's the turbo with strobe at 200 yards. That beam is so narrow, just so you can tell. That's our strobe. I'm gonna zoom in. And we can still easily see the steel target at 200 yards with strobe. Are you impressed? I have to be honest, I am. I, I did not think that these would be that bright. I did not think that I would actually be able to shoot that far with iron sights at night. And I didn't think that I'd be able to shoot that far um, with a red dot at night. So here's another question. Could we get more impressed? And the answer to that would be yes, I think we can. Well, or we're going to find out. Let's see how far we can go up the hill with each of these lights, both in the regular mode and in strobe. That would be more impressive. Okay, real quick here. You can't see the, the camera just doesn't pick up the light very well, but I'm looking at 300 yards here. All right, this 300 yards with the Valkyrie Turbo. That's easy. All right, let's go 400. Nice. Okay, so here we've got the Valkyrie PL Turbo. We talked about uh, reaching out at 300 and 400. I've got it mounted on a rifle here. We are uh, having a little rain and storm here, but uh, that's not going to stop us. Here we go. Easy enough. That was 300 yards. Okay, let the smoke clear a little bit. All right, here, we're gonna go 400. It's 400 yards, guys, with a pistol light. Can we see 500? Let's see. You know, we can. I'm gonna grab some more ammo. I wanna see if we can hit five. Okay, we've got some wind. We're gonna reach up there. Try at 500. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that? That was 500 yards. There we got it. Okay, I think we hit it three times. I'm not gonna lie, 500 is really pushing it, guys. <laughs> Hot dog, seriously, it doesn't get any better than that. Taking a pistol light, putting it on a rifle, and reaching up to 500 yards in the dark. I don't know about you, that answers my question on brightness. I would possibly like to see a laser on this, but that's probably another review and another product coming. Well, that only leaves one thing left to do. It's that time. Now, real quick, before we torture test these, I want to make a note that this torture test is going way above and beyond what they have listed. So we're going out of specs. You know, if they fail, that's really not reflecting on, on them at all. We're just actually trying to see, you know, what's uh, what's the extreme? What can we take these to? And I, I just want to make sure that I'm clear on that, that we're going to go above and beyond what they have listed for acceptable. I do need to point out that each of these is only rated for about a one meter drop. And as you can see, we are way beyond that. So that's where we dropped him from. But you know, that's what I do 
here at Beyond Seclusion is we torture test things. So what we're going to do now, make sure they're both working. We're also going to test battery life. Okay, you saw that on inspection text. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop these in the water on, and that's also going to help test their durability. And then we'll do the same with the freezer. So we've actually been testing them a while. They've probably been on, you know, I don't know, maybe a total of 10 or 15 minutes max. Okay, let's give them a go. We can see they're both still on. Okay, so they're both still on. Well, they're not hot anymore. All right, uh, let's just take a look. I, I think they're fine, but uh, I need both hands. We're gonna open up the battery compartment and dry them off, make sure there's nothing on the insides. Okay, so we did the drop test and the water test and we're still on, okay? I turned it off. I don't see any visible water in there whatsoever. Let's just quick quick check the battery compartment. Nice, I, I don't see nothing, okay? So we're solid there. So we came out of the drop test and the water test. Um, I have noticed it's, it's, yeah, it's flicked off there a couple of times. We might have jarred something loose there with that extreme drop. Um, but it's still working. I'm not seeing any kind of water or anything on the inside. Uh, as far as the drop though, we did exceed uh, what it's rated at by at least about three or four times. Let's just take a look and see. Um, I do have a little bit of water here on the back. Um, we do, yep. Okay, so we did get some water on the inside of this one. The drop may have been responsible for that. What's interesting though is, is it's still working. Let's, uh, let's kind of dry that out here, put these back in and continue on the test. Okay, so I got this blue out and I've got everything dry. It'll be interesting. You know, we may not actually have water down inside. We're gonna find out. Uh, we're just gonna, you know, keep on with the torture test. All right, guys, let's see if they're still going. Yeah, they're still going. Nice. Well, let's get them outside and thaw them out. Okay, so I opened up the battery compartment. Um, I think being on and the heat of that loosened up some moisture. So I blew out the back battery compartment again. We kind of had had some, some mist or you know some water vapor in there dried off the batteries, put them back in, and, and we're back to working again. What I do want to do is when this finally dies, and we've got an idea, you know, on the battery life, I'm going to open up this back and let it sit for a while um, and see if we can completely dry it out and, and then put in some new batteries and see how that does. Okay, the light is still on, but as far as actual brightness, um, for all practical purposes, I'm going to call that the batteries have died at this point. Okay, so what I did here was the batteries had just died. We did have, you know, we had some water in there. It wasn't a ton and it was still working. It doesn't appear that there's any water on the inside of there. Anyway, just out of curiosity, you know, we got a nice hot day here. We've got kind of this black surface. We're going to let the sun warm this up and... My theory is, is hopefully we're going to evaporate any water that's out of there, dry it up. I got some new batteries and we'll put those in and see how it does. And again, just a reminder, we greatly exceeded uh, the tolerances that, that were listed. Okay, so it's still on, guys, um, but I think I'm going to call it. I'll show you how, how much brightness we have at this point in time. So... That that's about all we got. Um, that's getting <laughs> it's getting pretty low. Uh, it's just uh, you know not far off from completely dying. So we're going to call the time here. But that's pretty impressive. Put some new batteries in, and yeah, it's good to go. 
Okay, so they both have been torture tested and egg. That's nice, that still works. We did put in the new batteries after testing the battery life. Nice. Okay, and this is the turbo guys, um, you know, that that failed the torture test, but actually did it fail. Um, I just opened it up, let it dry out, and it seems to be working absolutely perfectly. And we can still see all the distances. Now there's our 200 and strobe. That's awesome. Here's the PL Turbo. Nice. 200. 100. There you go, guys. It is what it is, and we've got another storm rolling in, but that's just awesome. There you have it, guys. It is what it is, and that's why I say it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope that you found it useful and helpful. If so, hit that subscribe button. That really does help the most. Also, you want to check out crazy, stupid deals. Anyway, until next time, happy shooting. Remember, educate our young people to shooting and gun safety. Always use common sense. Get a light on that gun. Uh, remember, every time that we're out on the range, that makes you and me ambassadors for the Second Amendment. Do me a favor. Be a good ambassador. Be a safe and responsible gun owner.